Today on Sport Fishing on the Fly, we're at Lac de Roche in central British Columbia. This is a big lake and big lakes provide big challenges for the fly fisher, but we have Steve Jennings of Little Fork Flying Tackle guiding us today, and the local knowledge he has is a necessity if you come to fish Lac de Roche or any of the other 100 plus lakes in this region. Fly fishing for rainbows with mayflies in June that's today as Streamlines proudly presents Sport Fishing on the Fly. So today we're going to try with, uh, because it is after the solstice and, and uh, prime uh, prime season for uh, mayfly nymphs, we'll, uh, we'll hope that we'll get, it's a little windy, but we'll hope we'll get some uh, some mayfly activity. The, uh, a little ostrich may or a little beadhead may nymph uh, on a long leader, just subsurface, uh, should be able to pick something up with it. Further down the lake there are some really good shoals, uh, we'll, we'll anchor up in pontoon boats on those shoals and fish, fish in the wave action where the uh, where the trout are uh, taking the nymphs as they're trying to emerge as as mayflies. The uh, the trout will be working the waves and, and uh, I've seen occasions here where the the waves have been three feet high on the edge of a shoal with the sunlight behind them and uh, when the uh, when the wave is lifted up and the sunlight's behind it. You look at the wave; it's full of trout. No, just swimming around in, in, in the wave, just just nailing nymphs. Just feeding. And um, it seems that the best days I've ever had here have been the days when there's been a lot of wind, when there's a churn on the shoal, and the water is a little clouded, and I think it uh, disorients the nymphs, and, and they're they're uh, scattered, and the trout just might have a heyday with them. We got the day for it. We, we got, got the lots of wind yeah. for sure. Yeah, and hopefully we don't get too much rain, but. Uh, you, this is June, and, and uh, if you is. don't like the weather up here, you have to stick around and wait five minutes. It'll, it'll change, you know? It changes. Well, I got a great little pattern, too, to try. I got a, a little green beadhead mayfly. Uh huh. That's been our fly, fly of the year, year so fly far. Of the year. Uh, I've, I'm uh, deadly. I, I'm using a, a little ostrich may is tied up by uh, my fly tire, uh, Ron Rao, in Little Fort, and, and he uh, he ties a perfect little full back may with an ostrich, ostrich hurl body in, in a, a, a sort of a muddy brown color. And I've had more success with that fly in here than any other. You have other quite fly. a few of those flies. I, I have. <laughs> I have a small supply, but the price goes up on the lake. <laughs> oh, that's good. We'll have to. If you're getting fish, we'll have to see. Nice rolls along the edges. Yeah, yeah, it looks really good. Got a lot of nice areas to it all around the trees. I guess Steve plans on taking us up right at the far end. So, yeah. sure handy having these boats, eh? Oh, <laughs> oh man. An ideal setup for this type of fishing is a 10 foot 4 weight rod to allow for long casts. Use long 12 to 14 foot leaders and don't forget to tie in 2 to 3 feet of fluorocarbon for the tippet. Catch up, catch up. Still on there? Can't catch up to me, I still on there. <laughs> right after the cast, as soon as it hit the water. Hit the water, yeah, it must have been right there. Got the extra long leader on now too. I went to the probably 16 feet leader. Yeah, a real long stretch. Yeah. Oh, it helps that fly get down a little bit too. These are nice fish. 
See, there's a panask also here. Open it. The wet. Oh, nice fish. The flyer. Look how silverly they are. Very silver. All these things weigh a couple pounds. I'll fly. Pop out of there. There we go. Nice Panask Rainbow. Let him revive a little bit. Ready to go. Look how fat they are. Gee, they're nice healthy fish. Okay. Oh. Jeez, just quicken my retrieve just that little bit and and I got a nice one. He's, he's decent size. Oh man. Oh. Oh. I think this guy's up in the three pound range it looks like. Yeah, a real nice one. A real nice one. Geez, these are great boats to, to fish out of. Stay up nice and high, you can see everything. Oh yeah, he's a nice one. Mm-hmm. Good fish. Yeah. Oh, oh the thing about it is they're not real long, but look at how fat he is. Oh man. <laughs> Just lip hooked. Oh, look at how, whoa, no, don't go away. Look at how fat that fish is. Now, isn't that a beautiful fish? Oh, nice and thick. That's a few pounds for sure. Whoa, we'll let him go. They got small little heads, big fat bodies. I mean, feeding well. Beautiful rainbows. What a couple of great runs. Oh, man. And there's a lot of bigger fish out there. Look at that. Isn't that a beautiful fish? Just gorgeous. These are all the Panask Kamloops Strain Rainbow. There he goes. To feed another day. <laughs> wow, we're rolling today and there's a lot more to come. Boy, oh boy. I have Ron from uh, Little Fort Fly and Tackle, expert fly tire, as uh, Steve Jennings told me. He's got a great little mayfly to show us today, and it's called the... Gray Ostrich Mayfly. Uh, great little fly, works excellent, so why don't we get started? Okay. To begin with, uh, the hook that I use for this fly is a size 14 in the gape and 4X long in the shank. I always wrap the shank completely with thread so things don't slip around on the bare metal of the hook. And what I use for tailing material is partridge. Partridge rump. So you've only taken about three or four sections of that rump. Oh, I've probably taken three more than that if you count them. There's probably oh, yeah. about six or eight. Okay. A lot of times at the end when I'm finished, I'll trim out a couple. A small little tail. Yeah. The tail should be approximately the length of the shank. The next thing I'll tie in will be the um, pheasant tail, which I'll use. This will be folded over the body after it's formed to form the back of the fly. Mayfly nymphs dwell mainly on the bottom, so. Um, they're usually quite dark in color, just for camouflage. And that's going to be like a fullback. We'll go this right will be the base. basically it's just a fullback fly. Oh, okay. Okay, and there you just tied in a, a ribbing material. Okay, yes, the ribbing Small here. Part. The ribbing here is just a piece of uh, invisible thread. Oh, okay. Okay. And for the body, I'm going to use this gray ostrich hurl. That's where the gray ostrich comes in. Though. Okay, this forms the body. Hmm. The secret ingredient. The fly. Now how this came about was um, there was another fly up there that is used for cattle bait. It's called uh, an owl nymph. Uh, I heard of it. Okay, it's a, it's a creamy sort of colored body and that comes from the, the creamy sections in an, in an owl oh, wing okay. feather. Okay. Now what that does, it gives you this fuzzy effect and um, since owls are quite illegal to harvest especially for commercial purposes you like pick this. on the ostrich. Ostrich I can get easily. <laughs> okay. so. Oh yeah, and that gives it a real nice full body. Yes, but the beauty of it is that um, when it gets wet, it gets quite a bit thinner. Yeah. The, uh, one of the biggest secrets I think to tying mayflies for lac de roche is uh, skinny bodies. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna do the ribbing here. I have to, I always have a thumbnail that I use here. I find nails very useful for fly tying. 
Yeah, you're just wanna, starting to wrap it all the way up to the shell. Yeah, it's like a regular fullback. How many wraps are you going to make all the way up? Oh, I never count. Oh, you never count? I just space them. Like I said, trout don't count. So, so you're just using your thumb as a spacer? And no, just to get the hurl from stop from oh, being cut okay. by the thread there. Huh. Uh, some, some tires might, um, you, you'll notice I cut the, there's a tail from the fly. Yep. Some tires might leave it in there and uh, work around it so it saves them a step. Oh, okay, of time, time wise, wise, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, oh, okay, let's see, get in my way here. But I don't. I cut it off because it's out of my way. And then when I tie it back in again, it gives me a little more hump on the top. Oh, okay. Okay, now a lot of these nymphs, when they're getting ready to emerge, their wing pads and their wing cases start to swell. Right. Yeah, they're always a little yeah. fuller near the head yeah. in the yeah. wing case. Now the you're front, tying The one. front part for the uh, front part of the thorax here, I just use one, but I tie it in by the butt because I find the fibers in this section of the feather quite thick. So, oops. And this end quite weak. Yeah. Now I'm going to take this partridge feather and I'm going to cut out the tip section here. Oh, okay. And just to form a little V. Yeah, form a little V. Okay. That way I can just tie the feather, the legs in all in one shot. Oh. I'll tie them in just with a few wraps, and I'll pull them into the length that I want. Oh, that's handy. Just okay. pull them up and Yeah, just pull them Excellent. up. Excellent. Pull the wing case over, tie off, and... Wow. and here's, here's something here that I, that I find is when you cut off this to put the scissors right onto the eye. That way you'll never cut your thread head. No, done that lots of times. Yeah. There we go. Oh, what a great little pattern. What a dry. And that's one of your original patterns, one that... Well, the only thing original is the, um, the usage of the ostrich. Yeah. Okay, it's just a regular fullback fly. I mean, it's been around for a long time. Excellent looking yeah. fly. Yeah. Work great in the lakes. Something that I'm going to tie up for sure. Let's see. Thanks a lot for the, okay. for the tie. You're quite welcome. Oh, funny, Granny. There he, is. There he goes. All right. <laughs> Not very big, but boy, do they ever jump? They do they ever? Are you finished yet? Come on, spit it, spit it, spit it, spit it. Oh, that was a better one, Steve. Get on. <laughs> yeah, well, there he is. Oh. Corner of the mouth, pop out. Off he goes. All right, decent on the uh, on the shrimp pattern. Remember we we had that fish and Steve uh, took the stomach sample, saw the scud in there, so I put on a scud and boom, popped one. And that's another thing for our viewers: if you've never tried fly fishing, you don't know what you're missing because it is the ultimate way to catch fish. Gee, this guy isn't that big, but he's sure sure fighting hard. Nice little fishy. Way to go, Don. <laughs> Thanks. Yes. Whoa, fella. Just wet the hand here and try to. It's one thing that's tough about this with a long tippet. He's just lip hooked, so I want to try to just do the easy release with him if I can. Nope. There he goes. Off he goes. On the little scud. We talk about local knowledge and how important it is. Well, Steve got us right into the spot right away. Did he ever? Knew where to come. He hasn't fished here yet this year. Hasn't First he? time he's come here oh, this first year. First time. Yeah. Knew exactly where to come. But this is his favorite spot, he says. 
when the mayflies are on and the caddis are coming on, I mean, geez, we see more fish in here than, oh, look at those, man, they're just everywhere. You yeah. gotta get down there. <laughs> Yo! Oh, look at the air time. Oh. We've seen mayflies today. We've seen the caddis flies. We're kind of getting everything, mixed bag, and they go in flurries, so. Yeah. So we're gonna do another stomach pump. We're gonna do another stomach pump. All right. Let's see what we can find. Well, there's a caddis on your arm, caddis on there. I think I might change over to a caddis pretty quick. Oh, oh look at the main nymphs. Yeah. Chuck full of them. Chuck full of main nymphs. Holy cow. Are those ever neat? Yeah, and that's about the size that we're using. had an opportunity to look at a lot of great products on the technology. We've never actually been inside a fly shop and there's a lot of them coming up and they're really great because they have a lot of information like here you can see all the, the report on the different lakes and the different rivers and what you can use. They got all the right kind of flies that you're going to use if you come to this area. Most of them have different book sections and of course fly fishermen are usually into books and a lot of the books can be really specific about the area that you're in or the region like BC fishing which is where we're at right now. This one here too, which Steve has come up with here at Little Fort, is an excellent fly fisher's guide to the whole area. So you can actually get a map, shows you about, well there's the lake that we're fishing at today, Lock the Roche. How to get there, talks about when the hatches come on. Lots of good stuff. And Steve not only is guiding us today, but Steve is also the owner of Little Fort Flying Tackle Shop. Hi Grant. And uh, excellent little guide there. and Lots of great lakes around. Yeah. You know, another question a lot of people ask me on the technology is, what can I buy the fly fisherman who already has it all? A well, couple ideas? I do have a couple of ideas. Uh, some things that uh, that are really handy. Uh, tippet dispenser. Tippets yes. are good. Don's got one of those. He loves it. Yeah, tippet dispenser uh, holds four spools. Wonderful product. Feeds out through these little holes here. Your tippet always stays neat, tidy, tucked away out of the sunlight. I can't show you my fly vest right now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you want something a little softer. How about a tippet wallet? This one by Steel Shadows. Okay. It holds uh, four spools of tippet in these little Velcro pouches here. Oh, it goes the tippet right in, right? Yeah. And the oh, that's a good idea. Tippet sticks out of the end here. Put leaders in the pockets here. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Excellent idea for the fly fisherman who has it all. That's right. Okay. How about for flies? There, you got a, a neat fly box. Oh yeah, it's the uh, the latest fly boxes uh, come in the the styrofoam, really lightweight with magnetic closures. Cloth covered, yep. floats, magnetic closure. Nice and soft. Nice Excellent. and soft. You know, another product that I see that you've got down there and something that you've used during the show is a stomach pump. That's now, right. Some people like stomach pumps and some people are against it. I know you obviously think you're not harming the fish at all by using this. I believe this is the most essential piece of equipment for the fly fisherman is the stomach pump. You can practice catch and release and finding out exactly what is inside the fish is really critical to matching the hatch. And uh, the little column here will tell you the story of what's been happening with that fish throughout the day. Uh, the first thing out is the last thing it's been eating. And, but it'll tell you further down the column uh, what's been in its stomach and where the hatch has changed throughout the day. Essential piece of equipment, Grant. Oh, this is excellent. And I think anybody who comes to an area like the Little Fort area needs to stop in here first. I mean, we always promote getting a guide first. And you should probably pick up Steve to take you out into some of these lakes so he can get you right onto fish right away. But if you're adventurous and you want to try that yourself, this is still the first place to come to. Just drop by for a chat. Right. Just talk about fishing. I just love to talk about fishing. And we, lo we love to stop at all these little fly shops. <laughs> excellent when you got here, Steve. Thank you. Don't need much line either. I don't see how far out they are. I didn't, kept it in close. I like having the line in close in case you see one rise near you. You can pull pick and it up throw. And fire like that one, eh? See that wind's changed directions again on us. It's swirly a bit, yeah. yeah. There he is. There he is. Oh! oh.
He gave himself away and he came back for it. <laughs> there, proof. Hey, nice shake oh, and yeah. baked it two seconds ago, second cast. And that shake and bake makes the fly sit up there nice and high and that's what they like. Yep. They like it nice and high. Yeah, <laughs> dry fly in a lake this size. Oh, it's a this, huge lake too. It's just. Well, it probably well, saw on, nice on the opening shot how big the lake is. Exactly. It's huge, huge. Very nice little guy on the dry. Oh, yeah, this guy's about 14, 15 inches, I yeah. think. Not bad at all. There. Come on. Gee, marvelous, huh? Get out of here. You go away. <laughs> you go away. <laughs> I got birds swooping at my fly. Same size. Almost the same color. Wow, was he taken to the air? Oh no, it's coming right at me. Whoa. Give me a little shower. Oh, now that's more like it. Boy, it slowed down on top, so we went back to the beadhead mayfly. I was doing my little figure eight pulls. Just tiny little figure eight pulls will show you. I have a, a dry line on. And I've probably got about 12 to 14 feet of, of leader altogether. Beadhead mayfly is slightly weighted. Gets down probably four to five feet and you just slowly crawl it back with little figure eight patterns. We'll show you in this. It was effective, got this guy. This is a nice fish. This is a decent sized fish. Definitely a net, definitely a net fish. Oh, oh look at that. <laughs> what a, what a fat fish. Wow, this fish has got to be pushing. It's definitely 20 plus inches for sure. That's without a doubt. Just by the feel of him, huh, it's got to be four or five pounds. He is a nice, so look at the little tiny head. He's got a little tiny head. Oh, look at how big that fish is. Is that a beauty or what? Get a look. Good look at him. That is a pretty fish. Well, we'll let him go. Another panask. He's got the adipose fin and not gills aren't clipped. So, oh, and there he goes. Often, what happens with uh, with fish when they feed on the caddis, you, they'll come up and they'll slap them with their sides to drown them out and then they'll turn around and take them. So what do we call this area out here that we were fishing today? Was it uh, Caribou, North Thompson? What area is that? It's kind of a little bit in between. It's called Interlakes area and it consists of uh, Lac de Roche, which we fished today, and Bridge Lake, Sheridan Lake, and thousands of other little lakes in between. Yeah, lots of lakes and what a great lake this one was here. Thank you for bringing us to this. You're welcome. And uh, supplying us with the Super Cats. Oh. Another, <laughs> another new adventure. Oh. Another good way to fish. Great way to fish. And boy, did we have it all today. We had dry mayflies, the wet mayflies, scuds, chronomids. We had it all. Just shows you a local knowledge and that's oh. why it's important to come out with a guide. We always recommend everybody going on their first adventure somewhere with a guide because they put you where the fish are and you get the great lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a great lunch, believe me. Wow. It was a lot of fun. Thank you very much for bringing us out here. You're welcome. What a super day of fishing. Dry fly in a big lake like this, and I just couldn't take off the dry fly once <laughs> I put it on. Such a great way to catch fish. Isn't it, Tess? It's the best. Yeah. Anyway, make sure you prepare and, and take care when you come to a lake like this. And conserve our waters. Again, you get a great fishery like this one. It's excellent. It was. See you next time. On sport fishing, on the fly. Bye now. Oh, oh right now. Oh, no way. He's got to be gone. Oh, he's still on. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> You're splashing me. <laughs> oh! Talk about air time. He's getting me all wet. <laughs> well, he's clear. Oh, he's ready to go already. Look at that. Huh? Nice little, nice that's little a pass. fish. Look at how just different colored green matches the bottom of the lake. I guess that's what you'd expect. Oh.